Welcome to another week of IUP TV News. I'm Vinny Lowry. Tonight, local businesses band together to drive sales, and IUP's faculty union president updates us on the new faculty contract. Later, Sarah Moltz will be here with an update on Hawk Zone Sports. And I'm Rachel Dossie. Let's begin tonight with a story from the Indiana Mall. After selling off in-store brands, seeking loans, and selling Kenmore appliances to Amazon, Sears Holdings Corporations will be closing more stores, including the Indiana location. Reporter Taylor Schaefer went to the mall to learn more about local impact. Sears and Kmart have released they will be closing stores nationwide, and Indiana County residents are saddened to find out that they are one of them. The Indiana Mall is losing another store. Sears Holdings Corporation will shutter another 49 stores, including the Sears store inside the Indiana Mall. The Indiana Sears has been an anchor store in the mall since it opened in 1979. The store will remain open through the holidays, but will close in late January. The latest closing is the second for a major store in the mall. Kmart closed earlier this year, as did Radio Shack and FYE Music Store. I had the opportunity of speaking with Jim Fink, who is one of those affected by the store closing. It, it affects us adversely because this is the only Sears or Kmart near us. And once they close, our shopping at Kmart and Sears will be limited at a distance and probably not much at all. We've bought a lot of things from Sears over the years and shop Kmart. So it's a, it's a negative effect for us. We live in Indiana. So like you said, the closest Sears or Kmart from here would be Greensburg, Pittsburgh, or Alton, or Johnston. It impact us a lot. Although a date has not been determined for the closings, it has said they will begin in January. I am Taylor Schaefer reporting for IUP TV News. Liquidation sales for Sears are expected to begin this month and continue until the store officially closes in 2018. More Indiana County residents found jobs in September. The Pennsylvania Department for Labor and Industry reports unemployment rate for Indiana County dropped by one tenth of a percent to 5.5%. While still holding above the state average of 4.8%, Indiana is comparable to neighboring counties, including Armstrong County at 5.7%, unemployment, and Cambria County at 6.1%. The largest job increases were in-state and local jobs when schools reopened for the fall term. A plane flown by Indiana native Jimmy Stewart is set to be part of the local Veterans Day Parade. The 1961 Cessna was once flown by Stewart and has, recent, and has recently undergone a restoration. The plane, the plane was found in 2015 in Dallas, Texas, and a group of volunteers went from Indiana to Dallas to bring the plane back to town. The plane will fly down Philadelphia Street on Saturday, November 11th during the parade. Well, downtown Indiana got a kickstart to the shopping season this past week. 15 businesses teamed up for the Wine Walk. Light refreshments and regional wine samples were offered at locations along Philadelphia Street. Reporter Alexi Vakonin joined the walk and brings us this story. I'm here at the Coney on Philadelphia Street and I'm about to do the downtown Indiana wine walk. I'm ready to sample some local wines and experience what downtown Indiana has to offer. The wine walk drew a sizable crowd to Philadelphia Street. I talked to event director David Janicek about what the walk was all about. And the reason for the wine walk is to bring people into the downtown. So we do have 15 regional wineries that will set up in 15 of our retailers. So we put the wine in the back of the retailer. So you get a, a ticket to taste wine and a uh, little bit of food with it. And then you walk through the retailer, see their wares, and hopefully buy some wine and, and buy some, uh, some items from our retailers right here in downtown Indiana. This is probably our sixth or seventh year, and it's uh, the funds that are raised go back into the downtown to help keep the downtown maintained and marketing our other events. I also had a chat with Deer Creek Winery's Judy Hunsberger about Pennsylvania wine and some autumn flavors. At our main winery, which is in Shippenville, PA, right outside of Clarion, we have about 20 to 30 varieties of wine, and today I have eight different ones with me. So those range from dry wines to sweeter wines, fruit wines. So we do like to bring a variety of wines. Our most popular is our Angry Antler Sangria, which is a cranberry, pear, and orange sangria. All of our wines are 100% natural, so we don't do the artificial colors or flavors. Our wines are completely natural. Our fruit wines are 100% fruit, so we don't do blends unless we tell you, which is an awesome thing to have. And then we're also featuring our mulled wines, which is when we warm and spice the wine. We have our Christmas in a cup and then our hot apple pie. Alexi Vauhkonen, IUP TV News. 
We're going to take a short break. When we return, IUP's faculty union president talks about how the new faculty contract benefits faculty and students. Stay tuned. The communications media and instructional technology PhD program gave my life direction. This program was perfect for me with a combination of research and media production. Hands-on courses gave me skills that I now pass on to my students. I use all three areas of the program, production, theory, and research, every day in my job as a college professor. Learn how the CMIT PhD program can change your life. Visit iup.edu slash CMIT. Can I go to the sleepover? Lucy, I want you to promise me something. If there's any drinking, I want you to say, no thanks, not my thing. Mom. I promise you, your real friends won't care. Deal? I promise, Mom. They really do hear you. Did you pack your toothbrush? For tips on how to start the talk, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. A public service message from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. All your professors, all of them, they know that all it takes is one dreamer with passion, one person, and they hope in each of you that you might be that one who makes a longer lasting light bulb, who writes music for the ages, who reaches into the mind and discovers a new star and who can change the world of a fifth grader. I'm gathered here to hope in you. I fell in love with the campus, with the people, with my IUP life. See it for yourself. Visit us. Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. Welcome back. Reporter Taylor Jones recently met with Nadine Lamoureux, IUP APSCUF president, with updates on the new one-year faculty contract. Let's take a closer look. IUP faculty members are able to vote in mid-November on the latest contract deal from the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education. Members will decide whether to ratify a tentative contract agreement that was reached in October. If it is approved, it will take effect at the conclusion of the current contract. I got to talk to Dr. Nadine Lamoureux for more details. We have a multi-layered system. Um, so we have a negotiations team, which would be the team that, that meets face-to-face -face with the state system. And behind them is the negotiations committee. Behind that committee is what we call legislative assembly, which is a, is a statewide policy-making body. Um, so I serve as a member of the committee and also legislative assembly and I voted in both cases um, to move this forward for ratification. Faculty union leaders agreed last week to move forward with a vote on a one-year contract agreement with dates set for November 13th through 15th. What we're going to try to ratify next week would be a one-year extension that would expire June 30th, 2019. So in terms of the ratification um, for a contract extension, it does seem fairly quick. I don't believe that's happened before in the history of the union. Getting this contract ratified is very important because not only is it helping out the staff, but also the students here at the university. It benefits everyone all the way around for us to have a contract extension. It enables us to stay focused on what we do best, which is teaching. It benefits the students so they don't need to fear any kind of interruption in their education. It benefits the, you know, the universities um, to keep functioning as normal. So I think it's a win-win all the way around. The one-year deal will take effect July 1st, 2018, after the current contract expires. Reporting for IUP TV News, I'm Taylor Jones. IUP Student Government Association has been talking about a recent effort to purge books from the library to clear room for more study areas. I asked students what they thought. My name is Vincent Lauer and I'm here in the SJ office where all things happen for the student body. Let's go check out some books. I mean if they're not getting read and if people weren't using them then that is kind of a waste of space. 
The Student Government Association has recently passed a resolution on the deaccession of books from the library. This action has raised support for student voices on campus. This past Tuesday, uh, SGA passed a resolution uh, in support of the current library deaccession plan. 43% of all the books in the library have not been circulated in the last 20 years. 36% of those books will be up for removal. Dean Gonzalez of IEP Libraries and the rest of his administration has made sure that we will have access to these books online through either agreements with other library systems or interlibrary loan. Um, and if it's through interlibrary loan, the books will be here within three to five days. If it's online, all 12,000 of us students could access all one single book at once. The removal of books would not only make a second quiet floor open 24-5 for students, but also provide safety for students by implementing more security cameras that will not be blocked with book stacks. Uh, we support it wholeheartedly, so long as so long as it is still within the best interest of the student body for this to occur. A final decision has not been made, but these books could be checked off their shelves in the coming semester. Reporting for IUP TV News, I'm Vincent Lowry. High school students will be back on campus this weekend as IUP hosts another recruitment open house. Visiting students and their parents will have an opportunity to tour the campus, meet with departments, and learn more about what IUP has to offer. The open house starts Saturday morning at 9. Sarah Moltz is going to join us for sports, playoff outlooks, basketball kickoff, and more when we return. You! 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 Oh! oh. Your fault. You! Uh, my fault? Your fault. Uh. Your fault. You're right. What? It's my fault. What do you mean, your fault? Just the You're right, it's my fault. We can make it Maybe both of us? Maybe just you. The brain is a remarkable organ. It's almost infinite in its capacity. Its ability to reach its full potential is limited by only one thing. The heart. For if the heart isn't fully engaged in what you're doing, if you have no drive, no passion, the brain will simply go through the motions. Find your success at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Receiving a Jefferson Award for public service was an honor I will always cherish. I've known since I was very young that I wanted to help make a difference, but I didn't create an organization to win an award. I did it because as a teacher, I believe all kids deserve a good start and a shot at high achievement. I'm April King, a graduate of Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Get my story at IUP.edu. The environment is my passion. Every day, I live for the outdoors and all of its challenges. That's why I enlisted in the Coast Guard. Now, I serve to protect the environment and defend my country. It's like I was born for this. Were you born ready for a greater challenge? Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. Welcome back to another week of Hawk Zone Sports. IP football is currently ranked number one in the region and number three in the American Football Coaches Association. The IUP win against Mercers brings them to 10-0 on the season and wraps up Western Division play with a 7-0 lead record. IUP reaches 10-0 for the first time since 1993 for its national finalist season. On the defensive side, J.R. Stevens led, leads the nation in pass defenses and had two interceptions against Mercyhurst. For the D-line, DeAndre Easterling had two sacks on the day, and DeAndre Tillman returned a fumble for a touchdown. Jumping over to the offensive side, Dwayne Brown led the rushing attack with 73 yards, averaging 4.9 yards per carry. The two other contributors to the running game were Justice Evans and Samir Bullock. The final score came out to 36 to 10 IUP. Next week, they play in the PSAC Championship game against Westchester in Westchester at 12 p.m. Good luck, Crimson Hawks. Sports recorder Teague and Schreckengoss met with football coach Het Paul Tortorella about the season so far. IUP football received the number one national ranking for Division II football, but first year head coach Paul Tortorella and his team still have much to play for as they hold on to their number one spot. I think it's a nice award uh, or ranking that they give out. 
uh, but it really doesn't mean a whole lot because, you know, we're only uh, three-quarters of the way through the season. Uh, the ranking that matters is, you know, how you, how you do at the end of the season in the playoffs and, you know, where we go from there will really be a de facto, deciding factor on what type of season we have. IUP headed to Erie this past weekend to square off against the 4-5 ranked Mercyhurst. Uh, it's always tougher to play on the road, so uh, we have to play what we call the right way, not turn the ball over, uh, run the football, uh, not be highly penalized, and just kind of play the way we play and uh, not get out of the structure of our offense, defense, and kicking game. IUP's offense is unique in the sense that they have 49 pronounced plays. These plays account for 20-plus yards each time used throughout their nine-game season. Of IUP's 49 splash plays, 17 have gone for touchdowns. I think it's, it's good in regards we can score quick. We can score from anywhere on the field with the speed that we have at wide out and at uh, running back and with Lenny Williams as the quarterback. Um, that's important to be able to do that, but also we, we have the ability to grind it out and run the ball and control the ball. Uh, time of possession is important to us, but uh, you know it's nice to know that offensively we can score at any time, anywhere. With their win over Gannon, IUP clenches their 21st PSAC West title, earning the record for most overall wins and Division II wins of any team in the PSAC West. As impressive as that title is, head coach Tortonella is as humble as can be. Great up to this point, uh, but as we always say, it's it's really up to the next game and what we do this Saturday. Uh, the next game is always the most important game. What we've done up to here uh, really doesn't matter in regards to what's going to happen this Saturday. So, you know, we just take it one game at a time and, you know, let it stand that way. The Crimson Hawks will go for the program's fourth PSAC title game this Saturday at Westchester. Kickoff is scheduled for 12:10. I'm Tegan Schreckengoss reporting for IUP TV News. It's now November, and with that being said, it's time for some IUP basketball. The IUP men's basketball team has been ranked number six in the nation, the National Association, excuse me, of basketball coaches NABC Division II preseason poll. IUP are now 0-2 overall, losing to number losing to number 20 in the nation, Finland, and ranked 10th Ferris State. Their next matchup will be against Virginia State on November 10th at home. IUP women's basketball is starting off their season with a lot of excitement. They beat the Pitt Panthers 73-68 to this past weekend. Caroline Appleby returns for her junior season and scored 20 points in the final exhibition matchup for the Crimson Hawks. The women's basketball team first regular season game will be against West Virginia State on Saturday, November 11th, which is this weekend. Sports reporter Stephen Langdon met with some members of the cross-country team with some updates about their season. He brings us this story. The IEP cross country team just wrapped up a fantastic season and I was lucky enough to catch up with two of the runners to discuss how they felt about the season. What do you feel is necessary going forward for you guys to get to nationals? Um, I think all our uh, pieces of the team just have to come together on the right day and we've really shown our depth in races and workouts and I think it's all going to come together at the regional championship at Lock Haven. And, um, you know, if we could just run what we're capable of running and running to our potential, then I really don't see us having too big of a problem, um, you know, hitting that mark and making it to Evansville, Indiana for nationals. So. And as a whole, how would you sum up your, your season so far? I think uh, in most aspects of what I expected, we've really we're hitting where I thought we could be and um, I still think there's a lot of room to improve uh, and we know where we need to improve um, and our coach is doing a great job at getting us there with all the workouts and I think our guys are really dedicated to reaching our goals this season. We've had a lot more groups than last year um, to just work together with inside of a race so um, we've been able to push harder and move up more um, with our depth this year. So um, we've had um, a lot of good runners come in as freshmen that are actually on our regional team this upcoming um, weekend for next weekend. Um, so that's exciting to have like new faces. And as a senior, how do you feel your senior leadership helps the team in any way? 
Um, so I've been uh, running cross country for college for these four years. So I think that's helped me um, because I know what it's like to run on most of these courses. Um, just being able to know um, what the workouts are like, um, what kind of mental work we have to put in before um, the kind of races we have to run and workouts. Um, I think I'm able to help my teammates in that way to prepare them. Ultimately. Best of luck to the cross country team as they wrap up their season. This is Stephen Langner reporting from WIUP News. This week on our special sports edition of Hawk on the Block, I went to Zinc Hall to ask students one of the hardest questions in sport. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Moltz and I'm in front of Zick Hall for this week's Hawk on the Block. For this week's Hawk on the Block, I'm asking the question, if these two teams matched up, who would win, the Cleveland Browns or Alabama? Alabama, because Cleveland sucks. <laughs> uh, Alabama, because the Cleveland Browns are awful. Alabama, because of Nick Saban. Definitely Alabama, just because the Browns are not as organized and, I mean, they're the Browns, so why not? <laughs> Alabama because the Cleveland Browns suck. <laughs> of course I can't pick Cleveland because look at my hat. Go Alabama. Alabama because Alabama's good and the Browns suck. That's to say Alabama, Browns are no good. Never were. I'm taking the Browns because they are professional players. They're all, Alabama's just college. And Browns all mean all technique. All right. I'm picking the better people. Uh, Alabama. Well, I think we've heard it all. Sorry, Cleveland Browns fans. You guys are not the winner today. For IEP TV News, I'm Sarah Moltz. And that's all for sports. When we return, some of us have recently got a glimpse inside of KDK TV, and Vinny Rachel will bring you upcoming events. Receiving a Jefferson Award for public service was an honor I will always cherish. I've known since I was very young that I wanted to help make a difference. But I didn't create an organization to win an award. I did it because as a teacher, I believe all kids deserve a good start and a shot at high achievement. I'm April King, a graduate of Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Get my story at iup.edu. The environment is my passion. Every day, I live for the outdoors and all of its challenges. That's why I enlisted in the Coast Guard. Now, I serve to protect the environment and defend my country. It's like I was born for this. Were you born ready for a greater challenge? Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. It's hard to explain. It just became home. There are hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes and faculty that really get to know you. Amazing internships and everywhere, programs that help to find a job that is right for you. It's what IUP is about, a commitment to your success. See it for yourself. Visit us. Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. On this newscast, we typically feature stories from IUP's 6 o'clock series, a long-running program at IUP where students and community members learn about and understand current issues. Reporter Taylor Jones met with series coordinator Brianna Dryley for a glimpse at what goes into organizing these weekly events. I'm here at the Center for Multicultural Student Leadership and Engagement Office here in Pratt Hall. This office runs a program called the Six O'Clock Series. People who attend it learn about current events and look at topics from a new perspective. The program is targeted towards college students and campus community. Coming to this series does leave people with a new view on how things are. The 6 o'clock series exists, I think, to help bridge the gap between what students learn in the classroom um, and then what they learn outside of the classroom. A lot of our programs combine entertainment and education. It helps students become aware of topics that they might not otherwise think about. For every program, there's always a different moderator, and that moderator is chosen by the people who are on the panel. The 6 o'clock series co-sponsors every program, but then we have different departments and um, academic, I guess, different student affairs departments, different academic departments who co-sponsor um, community organizations. For instance, tonight's program is also co-sponsored by the Suicide Task Force. Um, so really, if there's a panel and a moderator, that moderator is determined by whoever's co-sponsoring the panel. A good amount of students do come to the lectures, but there's a special one that the series does have. Each year we've been bringing a Holocaust survivor 
and usually that gets a really good turnout, really interesting stories. Um, you know, we don't have, with that generation being as old as they are, it's nice to have the opportunity to hear from somebody um, who went through that. With the fall semester almost coming to an end, the program still has some lectures left for the students. Next week we have one on uh, Thoreau. It's the bicentennial of the author, Thoreau. And um, the following one then will be our Veterans Day celebration. The six o'clock series is every Monday in the Hub Ohio room. All lectures are free and are available to the public. I'm Taylor Jones reporting for IUP TV News. The next installment of the six o'clock series is a Veterans Day celebration. Our IUP TV News crew had the chance to tour KDKA in Pittsburgh thanks to some IUP alumni. We bring you along on our tour. Okay, well, follow me down to the control room. The tour started in the hallway of Gateway Center in downtown Pittsburgh with new newscast director, Joe Dimple. Dimple has been working with the station for 13 years and is in control of the broadcast that viewers see. Before each show, the director meets with the producer and floor director to ensure a smooth live production of the newscast. So on this right here, are they going to turn no. the tour? I like to say that the producer is like uh, a composer and I, as the director, am like the conductor. It's my job, they write the music, it's my job to get the orchestra to perform it all so that we're all on the same, you know, same beat, same timing of everything so that the mics are open at the right time, the cameras are pointed at the right person, and at the right video rolls. Back in the studio, watching Ron Smiley forecast the weather, standing in front of the green screen and pointing to a television monitor, it appears the conductor is in tune with his trombone and the symphony is flawless. For me, now it's kind of like riding a bike, you know, you just do it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you do have to practice at it. It's nothing, it's not something that just, you know, you just walk over there and you can do um, to make it look easy. Whether controlling the remote control cameras from a computer that looks like a futuristic launch pad, keeping pace with anchors as the teleprompter operator, or pulling up the right images for the video screens in the studio, IUP students were assured the process gets easier over time. For continued in the Digital Media Center where reporters, assignment editors, photographers, and editors do the bulk of the work that is put together for the viewer to see during newscasts. Cabinet after cabinet and tape after tape line the walls of the room. An ode to the tape era before digital media, servers and software took over newsrooms and edit bays. While we had the chance to see what happens at KDKA, now you can have the same opportunity here in our studio. You can tour a television production facility, including this set, and our campus radio station WIUPFM to see what we do in our classes and student productions. Our WIUPFM and, w and IUP TV open house is Wednesday, November 15th from 3 to 5 here in the basement of Davis Hall at IUP. We hope you come to take a look at what we do. Now let's take a look at some of the upcoming events. IUP graduate and doctoral students are encouraged to attend the Community College Career Fair on Friday, November 10th. It takes place in the Hub from 10 to 3. More information is available through the Career and Professional Development Center. On Sunday, November 12th, the Lively Arts presents the Acorn Project in Waller Hall. The event starts at 2. As we mentioned earlier, on Monday, November 13th, the 6 o'clock series is observing Veterans Day with distinguished alumni and retired Navy General C.J. Janes. That's all we have for you tonight. For all of us here at IEP TV News, thank you so much for watching and be sure to tune in next week.